Rams, this backfield, this offense overall, uh, their ADP is all over the place. But primarily this backfield has been the talk a lot of this offseason uh, because of Blake Corum. Uh, they were a lot closer. Now we're starting to see a little bit of a divide. Now, uh, I think it was a, another report last week uh, stating that I think it was a beat reporter. I don't have it in front of me. Basically saying that Kyron Williams will be the starting running back in this backfield. Uh, I don't really refute that at all, considering the season Kyron had. Now, Blake Corum comes in, highly touted rookie. He can certainly cut into some of that workload. Now, let's start with the ADP. Uh, Kyron is up 4.2 spots. Corm is down six spots. Kyron, uh, 20.9, uh, ADP Corum down to 116 and a half. I have said the same take about the Arizona Cardinals with Connor and Trey Benson. And I'm going to, I'm going to use the same comparison here. Last year, everybody loved Charbonnet coming out. The landing spot with the Seattle Seahawks was terrible because they had an entrenched, productive, and primarily healthy starter in Kenneth Walker. Uh, same thing in Arizona with James Conner, at least for one more year. I'm going to use the same narrative with the Los Angeles Rams uh, because if you ask me, like Kyron Williams has been their best running back since Todd Gurley, and it's not close. And I, I think with the McVay history, I think he wants that. I don't want to say, you know, I don't know bell cow is the right word, but he wants a back that he could feature in this offense. And I think Kyron Williams is the guy. Kyron was hyper productive last year. Uh, one of the best fans, I think it was on waivers uh, in week one. Uh, for a lot of teams. And and, and again, like uh, running back two in fantasy points per game, running back seven overall, did miss a couple games, only played in 12 games. But when, it, when you talk about efficiency, eighth in three yards per carry, 13th in yards per touch, uh, eighth in evaded tackles, uh, 20th in breakaway runs, 17th in yards created per touch, very, very good running back. Yeah. Surprised the hell out of everybody. Because uh, I certainly did not see this version of Kyron Williams coming uh, but where are you, Pete, with the addition of Blake Corum? Uh, do you see McVay kind of taking away from this volume workload that Kyron Williams has? Because I, I, I particularly don't see it unless Kyron struggles. So, uh, personally, I think this is a we're, we're at a perfect point in the off season where the rubber kind of starts to meet the road where rookie offseason hype is dying down, okay? The the NFL draft is now almost about two, two and a half, three months, of, you know, has passed, and people are starting to wake up, right? Um, Blake Corum, and, and the reason we look up look at the FFPC is because, not to say just because you, you spend more money, you're sharper, uh, but uh, I think, you know, there's a lot of this rookie fever that tends to happen and people get burned by it. I mean, look, I have my, I have a couple of shares of Blake Corum in an underdog best ball. I'm not going to sit here and say that I haven't gotten a little bit of exposure, but that's really more due to Kyron's health mm -hmm. than it is due to opportunity share. Um, Kyron has dealt with some injuries, right? He's a smaller back. Um, he did, he had a foot injury that kept him out of OTAs. Um, and so I worry more about the health with Kyron and can he hold up um, with a full workload healthy the rest like for a full season because you know I know Nate came in here and he and he said the difference between Seattle and I think it's a good point is McVeigh uses the weapon that he wants and that he likes right and I don't think they're going to shy away with Kyron Williams they are not invested in Kyron Williams this is a guy they got for nothing okay so at the running back position we say it all the time but like. These guys that like this isn't a guy where you know they 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 drafted like a Bijan Robinson right who you know is still young in his career right they, they see a future they took him in the first round like you know they they definitely want to ease his workload they're going to use him but like you know th they don't have a future invested in Kyron Williams so I could see them not not being hesitant to give him the full workload and if he gets hurt he gets hurt but Blake Corum is a guy that they feel comfortable that can tote the rock if Kyron does get hurt. And I think it's more they drafted Quorum for 
future and safety blanket. And I think Corum has a chance to take the job maybe next year, not this season. But I think at his current cost, I am fading Kyron Williams. Um, I do have a couple of shares of him um, that I got when he was a little bit cheaper after they drafted Blake Corum and things got moved around. Now the price has adjusted. He's sitting at 20. I'm not paying a, a high, a mid second round pick on Kyron Williams. I like the guy. Um, I really do. It's just too expensive. And I feel like you're just drafting him at his ceiling. And I prefer some of the guys. I prefer to swing on a guy like Isaiah Pacheco or get Derrick Henry uh, a round later, to be honest with you. But Pacheco, you can get two rounds later. I'm not saying, I'm just saying in terms of the cost. Yeah. I, I mean, let's focus there. Now, to be fair, Blake Quorum is getting that Sean McVay hype so far this offseason. And, uh, Puka Nakua got similar last year. And if you follow that bouncing ball, I'm not saying so like we have to give both sides of the equation. There is a shot that Blake Corum uh, is a thing, but I, I just don't know if I want, and I'm with you. I don't think I, I want a lot of this backfield. Um, you know, you mentioned the Kyron Williams injury and then you mentioned his price, uh, you know, right around player 21 off the board, 20.9. And if we look at the running backs going around him, um, I'm all in on Derrick Henry. I much rather, and, and this is obviously not a dynasty take, but like in redraft, give me Derrick Henry. We know, at least we think we know what we're going to get out of Derrick Henry in this offense with the threat of Lamar Jackson and the RPO. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I'm taking, like, if you put a gun to my head and say Pacheco or Kyron, I'm probably going Kyron Williams. Sure. I, I, um, I, I mean, if those talking, two. yeah, I mean, in a vacuum, I yes, I would take Kyron. Pacheco warrants his price either. Really? Because yeah. I really don't see them. I, I just really don't see them having a second back that's going to spell him. I think Pacheco is a true three down back. He's tough. But he's another guy. He runs so violently where there's an injury risk there too. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I love my Rutgers jersey guys. So, you know, I love I I love Pacheco. And I, I'm a Broncos fan. So, like, I mean, you know, it, I'm not rooting for the Chiefs. That's for sure. Um, I, I, I do. I, I don't know. I just I like his play style. I like that they added more weapons on the offense for the Chiefs that, like, should give Pacheco lighter boxes. I mean, now you're dealing with – they're, they have field stretchers in in uh, Brown and Worthy um, that, like, they're going to have – teams are going to have to bring an extra DB out, right? Should lighten up the box for Pacheco, and I think that should help. Um, and their offensive line should take a step forward in some of the young guys that they brought in from last year. So I like him. Uh, Jamie did come in here and said, what percentage of snaps do you think Kyron will get? Um, I, I Honestly, if Kyron's healthy, I think he's probably getting about 80 he saw an 83.9% snap share last year. Obviously, yeah. there I don't think there was a backup there remotely talented like a Blake Corum. So, yes, that could change things. Wait, you don't, just, you're not excited about Rolls-Royce, the new no, Cowboys shut running back? Shut up. Get out of here with that. <laughs> That's why I'm drafting Zeke in, in fucking round 14, wherever he's oh, going. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Right um, there with you. But, you know, it's just the Kyron Price. Like, there's a – teardrop for me after Derrick Henry. We go look at the top running backs before we move off this talking point. CMC, Bijan, Brees, Saquon, JT, Henry, Gibbs. And I say Gibbs last. I think Gibbs is going way too high. Oh, yeah. um, and then like there's a teardrop. Then we have Kyron, ETN, HN, teardrop, Pacheco, Mixon, J. Like I, I, if I'm not getting one of those one or two of those top guys, if I'm like say doing a a, a heavy robust running back build, I, I'm waiting. Me like too. then, like let me go after the Kenneth Walker, Aaron Jones, Ram Stevenson, Connor, Zamir White, Najee. Like I'll wait. I just don't love some of these backs going in this middling, you know, third, fourth round price point right now. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. I, when, anytime I'm drafting right now, it's pretty much either I'm taking a running back in the first, the second round, and it stops at JT and Saquon in the second round, and then it's only Henry. It's only Henry is the only other guy I'm taking. At that point, I'm probably waiting until Pacheco comes around. I'm not drafting much ETN. and uh, But for the most part, it's really just like 
a running back in the first round or two, and then I'm and if not, I'm fading until I get to like round four, five, or six, and I'm probably taking a lot of receivers.